Hello everybody and welcome to the Bayou Bob Show. Today I'm going to be showing y'all how to cook my favorite type of barbecue and that is the brisket. So the thing I like about the brisket is it's hard to hide when you mess up a brisket. Ribs you can cover with sauce, pork butt you can cover with sauce, but brisket you can't cover it up with sauce. If you mess it up, you mess it up. It really shows the true test of how good of a barbecue cook you are. So today I'm gonna show you how to trim, how to cook, how to wrap, how to cut it after you're done cooking it, how to make burn ends, and show you how to eat it. So let's get started. So first thing you do whenever you're cooking a brisket is you wanna trim all this hard fat off of the brisket. So the reason why there's so much fat on a brisket, a brisket consists of two different muscles. You got the flat point down here. Well, you have the flat down here. You have the point up here. The flat is where you get your pretty long sliced brisket pieces. The point is where you get your burnt ends from. So what we're gonna, we have a 16 pound whole packer brisket here. So that means we have the point and the flat on this brisket. They're not separated. Sometimes you can buy them separated I have the whole one here. So we're gonna start off, get you a boning knife. This is what I like to use real sharp. I have just a little Dexter Russell boning knife, a little bit thicker than a filet knife like you'd use for cleaning fish, got a little bit more backbone to it. So we're gonna start off, just churn away some of this fat. So you're gonna trim down to where it's almost just bare meat on this side of the brisket. You still wanna leave a little bit of fat just so that whenever it's cooking, it'll cook down and render off into the meat itself. And then you also want to trim off any of these thin, loose hanging pieces. Because whenever you're cooking, these are just going to get all burnt and crispy. And not crispy in a good way on this brisket. And then this hard layer of fat right here, this is the part, this is where the point and the flat are separated. If you follow this line of fat right here is where you'll be able to take, take the two muscles apart. But we're going to leave them together today. So we're just going to take out some of this fat so that the muscles stay together while we cook. Then we'll separate the point and the flat from each other after we cook the brisket and then we'll turn the point in the burn ends while we're slicing the fat, while we're slicing the flat. So 
So whenever you buy a whole pack of brisket, you're gonna have this end right here from where they cut it in the meat packing plant. But it's got a bunch of just rough edges and whatnot to it. We're gonna take this whole edge off. That way we have a nice smooth edge to work with when we're cooking. So as you can see, we got a real thick piece of fat right here. So this hard, hard, hard fat's not gonna do us any good while we're cooking. This fat doesn't render down at all. So I'm gonna dive into taking some of that fat off. All right, so now we're going to go to the actual fat cap side of the brisket. So you want to leave a quarter inch or so of fat on this side. But you want to feel around for any hard fat spots on this side. And trim off all the hard fat sides. The soft fat is going to be good for us. That's the fat that's going to be able to render off in the cooking process.
And one thing I suggest doing is whenever you're trimming your brisket, is to trim it straight out of the refrigerator so that the brisket's as cold as possible so that the fat is still a little tough and sticking together because the warmer this brisket gets, the more gooey the fat gets and the harder it is to trim. All right, so now we got our brisket trimmed to our liking, except for this part. We're gonna get this brisket seasoned. So I have a my beef rub mix here. It's just coarse salt, coarse chopped uh, black pepper, and a little bit of McCormick. Montreal steak seasoning. The salt and pepper is about 50-50 mix. And then just a little, little splash of the uh, Montreal steak seasoning. So I got it. Mix it all together. Put it in an empty shaker. So it's easier to distribute on the meat. If you ain't got an extra shaker, you can just mix it in a bowl and sprinkle it by hand. So we're going to coat this thing real heavy. I like using the coarse salt and the coarse pepper. So it gives it a better bark. I like a big thick bark on the brisket. So put that on real heavy. Then while you're doing this, make sure you keep shaking it throughout the process because the salt likes to gravitate toward the bottom because it's denser than the pepper. So you don't want to have just pepper coming out. And flip it over, hit the back side. Make sure you're getting the sides of it too. All right, so now we're just gonna let that sit for about 30 minutes, let that rub bind to the meat, let the meat come up closer to room temperature while we wait for our smoker to come up and hold at the temperature that we want. All right, so we have our Traeger set to 225 degrees. Got the brisket on the smoker, we, I cooked mine fat side up there's a big debate barbecue or fat side up fat side down i like fat side up so now all that fat that renders seep down through the meat give it better flavor so we're using hickory pellets today i like using the hickory in almost everything i cook so we're gonna put the temperature probe in the flat then so we're gonna cook this until we get an internal temperature of 165 degrees. Once we hit 165, we're gonna take a 
take the brisket off, wrap it in butcher paper, and put it back on so it reaches 205. The reason why we pull it 165, 165 is where the meat and the fat actually start breaking down. That's where all the magic happens. But also at that point, is also where all the juices leave the meat. So in order to keep cooking, to get that real tender barbecue that we're looking for, we need to wrap the meat in something to stop the juices from leaving the meat. So we use butcher paper for brisket, that way we still keep that bark versus tinfoil. A lot of people use tinfoil, but they lose their bark. So we have a real soggy outside of their brisket. So sort of that nice, good, crispy, hard bark on the outside. So we're gonna get this going. It'll be probably six to eight hours until it's ready to be wrapped. So see y'all in a little while. All right, so the brisket has been on for a little over six hours. We put it on at 4.30 this morning. It's now 10.30 in the morning. We got an internal temperature of 165. And as you can see, it's got a nice little bark come together on the outside. So now we're about to take this thing off and get it wrapped up with some butcher paper. So once you take the brisket off the smoker for the 165, we're gonna wrap it in some butcher paper. Like I said before, we're gonna wrap it 165. That's whenever all the juices start coming out of the meat. And you wanna keep those juices in while we cook it to an internal temperature of 204 for the finished brisket. So we're using butcher paper, vice using a little full, like some people will use. So we wanna keep that good bark that we have going right now. So then, unlike with tinfoil, tinfoil, it's gonna cook it faster, but you're gonna end up with a soggy outside. I mean, I don't want that on my brisket. That's not how I like brisket, so that's not how I'm gonna cook it. So, we're gonna start by wrapping. You're gonna find the, the widest butcher paper that you can find. I got this on Amazon. Just take it. Corners tucked in and tucked up nice and tight. And now we got it all wrapped up, we're going to throw it back on the smoker. We're going to put the probe back on the flat side instead of the point. I put the probe in the flat side because that's going to get done before the point gets done. And I don't want the flat drying out while I'm waiting on the point to get finished cooking. Plus, I'm going to cut the point off and make burn ends. Whenever I make burn ends, we're going to throw it back in the smoker anyway. So it's going to cook the point more that way. Let's get it back on the smoker. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. She has finally reached the temperature that we're looking for, which is a 204 degree internal temperature. We're gonna take this brisket off, set it in a pan, just a regular old tinfoil pan like so. Set it on the counter. We're gonna let her rest for 30 minutes, and then we're gonna cut, separate the point from the flat. And then I'm gonna show you how to cut out the point to make burnt ends. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. This brisket is done smoked for 11 hours and 45 minutes. It's done rested for another 35 minutes. Now we're about ready to cut into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna make burnt ends today. We've got people coming over tonight. We'll make some burnt ends so that we'll, we'll good little beef morsels for everybody to snack on. I'm gonna separate the point from the flat. So as you can see from where we trimmed it earlier, right here, you can see the fat line. 
of where the point and the flat separate each other at. So you pull right there, good, nice little fat line separates the two muscles. So I'm gonna take the same knife I trimmed with earlier. I'm gonna flip this thing over, It'll be easier to get to. I'm just gonna trim right down that fat line. Just follow. Follow right down it. And there you have your point and your flat. So for these burn ends, I'm gonna cut this up into cubes. I'm gonna flip it over and meat side up. I'm just gonna cube this up, bite-sized little pieces. So whenever you're cutting these, you don't really have to worry about going with the grain or against the grain because it's all getting cut up in the cubes. Then I'm gonna take these cubes, throw them into a pan. So once you have the point all cubed up, you're gonna to toss all these cubes in some sauce. So I have some of my Grips Hammerhead sauce I made today right here. This is my own recipe of sauce that I made back the first time was, hell, I think it was 2016 while we were living on uh, Lewis Street. I made a bunch for Christmas presents one year. Soon I'll have a video to show you how to make this sauce. But, so we're gonna put some of the Grips Hammerhead sauce on these burn ends. No real particular measurement, just depends on how much you want, how saucy you want your burn ends. So we're just gonna take these, just mix them up with the sauce.
So now we got them all sauced up. I'm gonna cover this pan with tin foil and we're gonna throw them back on the smoker for another 45 minutes. We're gonna keep it the same temperature of 225. So that'll allow this sauce to cook into the meat and give us nice little appetizer, bite size, little barbecue bites. All right, so we got the burnt ends on the smoker. Go ahead and smoke. But this right here, this tells you exactly how good you do on your brisket or not. This is the part that you can't hide. Burnt ends, you cover in sauce, throw them back on the smoker, let them recook. But this flat, these are the pieces that you turn in for competition. These are the pieces that everybody talks about. These are the ones that got the pretty smoke grains, got the good uh, cross grain slice, I guess you could say it. These are the ones that everybody takes pictures of. So now we're about to see just how good this thing actually turned out today. As you can see by looking at this cutting board and all the juice all over, this thing turned out pretty juicy. We got still got juice sitting all over here. So we're gonna cut across the grain. We got the grain running this way on this brisket today. So we're gonna cut across here, cut this end off. And you wanna, whenever you slice, you wanna, wanna cut it about a pencil width thick. So we're gonna cut that one, and then we're gonna cut one more here. Anything thicker than that, it's gonna to be too dry. You cut anything thinner than that, it's gonna cover up anything that you cooked. So, got a decent smoke ring. Got a good pull on it, not too tough. I'm gonna to give it a taste. Pretty good, we got a good bark on it. We got a couple other people here that could be taste testers, but they don't wanna get on the camera today. So I guess I'm gonna have to review my own food. Turned out pretty decent today. Uh, a little drier than I'd like it to be on this flat, but it is what it is. Every day is going to be different every time you barbecue. So thank you all for tuning in. This is my how to do brisket. Let me know what else y'all want to see me cook and go Tigers.